So the number one piece of improvement that Mo Bamba needs to prioritize is his size and strength. Because as we're going to see in this video, while he is able to move around, sometimes he gets bullied. Here, Marcin Gortat pushes him out of the way so he can't set a screen. He also seals off Bamba for an easy layup for Tobias Harris. And on this play, when he attempts to go for a rebound, he just kind of gets swallowed up by three Kings players. So getting bigger will definitely help Mo out. As far as his actual game, I think what's intriguing is how good of a finisher he is. He's shooting a gargantuan 79% at the basket. And I think you could have viewed this as a potential problem for him because while he's got those really long arms and again, he is a pretty nimble dude around the basket, the fear was that he was just going to get pushed off the spot too many times, but it seems like he's doing a pretty okay job at that. And we assume that if he can put on some extra pounds, he can bully some guys out of the way sometimes for a few extra easy buckets a game. But even right now, it is going pretty okay for Mo. So that is an intriguing start to his offense, I would say. The next thing is the jump shot. And this is one of the cases for drafting him where the Magic selected him, right? As you, you, Mo can be this new age five who can step out uh, to the three-point line and all that. His mid-range jumper is okay. The form looks pretty good. He's pretty quick going up with it. And his percentages on long twos have actually been pretty damn good at 40% for the season. So that's a good start. I mean, we've seen big guys who have been able to make mid-rangers step out to the three-point line. Mo has tried to do that this year. And before we start talking about the reality of his three-point shot, I'll talk about the potential first. You know, the form isn't horrible for a guy who's 7 feet tall and has abnormally long arms. So, given that he's 20 years old, you fast forward a few seasons, perhaps he could make these consistently. But as far as this season is going, um, he's a bad three-point shooter. He's shooting below 30%. His free throws are also not very good as well, which suggests that he does have some work to do. But again, given that the mid-range is pretty all right if he just keeps on with these, just keeps practicing them season after season, then perhaps Mo can start making these a lot. But as of right now, if you're the defense, you're actually hoping that he shoots the three-pointers that you dare him to take. If we could talk about his rebounding, it's not a great part of his game right now. It's not bad. Uh, according to NBA.com, there's been about 80 centers this year who have played at least 20 games. Of those 80... Mo is around number 30 in defensive rebounding percentage. It's not bad. It's certainly not amazing, but it could be worse at the same time. He's no Robin Lopez, who's dead last. And again, we hope that if he can just get stronger, then perhaps he can box guys out more often and swallow up a few more of these defensive boards. But I think up to this point, he's been okay enough at it to feel intrigued by that area of his game. His offensive rebounding is going to require a little bit more work, I would say. There are a lot of times when he just stares at potential offensive rebounds and doesn't actually go for them, but when he sets his mind to it, it seems like he can be a problem for the other team. So perhaps being a little bit more aggressive on the boards could lead to Mo being a bit of a terror there. If we can talk about his defense, which is, of course, the main thing with him, can he be this amazing, versatile defensive center. His rim protection seems pretty okay. Now, I know block shots are not the end-all be-all of defensive numbers, and defensive numbers in general are kind of a crapshoot, but he is averaging one and a half blocks a game, and he only plays about 15 minutes a night. That seems pretty good if you ask me. We all know that his arms make no sense. His height and verticality as well would suggest that he can be quite a rim protector. And I'm all in. I am a believer in Moe's potential to protect the basket. Even when he doesn't block a shot, it seems like when he's in position, he bothers offensive players. And the hope that some people have for this guy is that he can be kind of a, another version of Rudy Gobert. A little bit more athletic, a little bit more versatile, but the rim protection's definitely uh, being on that level. And hey, maybe... I think he's shown enough signs so far that would suggest, eh, could be the case later on in his career. Now, he's not perfect. Sometimes he commits too hard on this one. It leads to Carl Anthony Towns getting a wide open shot. He is a little too slow on the Andrew Wiggins post up. 
He bites on a Tobias Harris pump fake. That's going to send him to the free throw line. Here, he has a chance to block Jackson's shot, and he just doesn't. He just kind of stands there. And now we're going to look at his on-ball defense, which is another reason why some people are so excited with Mo. A lot of this is going to be pick and roll coverages. It's kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes he looks good. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he's able to cut off ball handlers and then get back to the center, as he does on here. Another time, he's able to force uh, Bogdanovich into the corner, pretty much stopping the Kings offense. And then he forces Jackson to take a contested, semi-contested mid-range jumper. But like I said, it's not always perfect. On this one, he gets beat on the roll by Harry Giles. Not much of a contest at the rim. Andrew Wiggins is able to just get by him with not much resistance here. Similar thing happens as Tobias Harris treats him as if he's a guard who has no business staying in front of him. And while you may be able to force Justin Jackson into a mid-range, it's not going to work against Kemba Walker. But if we can be positive again, he had a decent game against some of these Kings guards. Another bad jump shot. Patrick Beverly has nowhere to go as Mo seals the pick and roll and stays in front of his guy there. Shea Gilgis Alexander also doesn't have too many options as Mo switches onto him. And then Andrew Wiggins, who makes this shot, still has to work for it as Moe's really long arms made it at least kind of difficult. I mean, at this point, I can just show you a good clip and a bad clip. I mean, Cody Zeller gets kind of a runway, so Moe has to foul him. Here, he's able to stay in front of Tony Parker, and he makes him pass it outside. On this one, Tony Parker actually misses the shot, but Moe is not the reason why. I mean, he just got by him with not much trouble. And then on this here, uh, Tyus Jones like some of these other point guards, is forced to go to his plan B. That's the gist with Mo Bamba. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it isn't on defense, but if you ask me, I think there's been enough good signs with the shot blocking to suggest that he can end up being a pretty damn good defensive player. And I think that's the overall vibe that I have with him. It's going to take a minute, and Nikola Vucevic is the better player right now and should be starting over Mo, but... Assuming that he works hard and the Magic keep giving him the opportunities to play, I think they will eventually feel pretty good about this draft pick.